Good day to you all. My name is uh, Javier Lanfranchi, broadcasting from our factory in Visano, Italy. And this is Facin Group's exclusive webinar for the wind energy industry. First of all, we would like to thank you all for the questions you have sent during the registration. You can also send your questions or comments during the webinar using the chat section on the right-hand side corner of your screen. We will do our best to answer as many questions as possible during the Q&A at the end of this webinar and certainly after. Before we get started, a few words from our CEO, Andrea Ceretti. Good day to you all and thank you for participating in our first webinar dedicated to the wind energy industry. First and foremost, I would like to give my thanks and appreciation to the speakers in this webinar for their time and for sharing their valuable knowledge with all of us. Secondly, I would like to stress the importance of the times we are living and the responsibility we have as part of the supply chain. As you will see during the webinar, the forecasted growth of wind farms all over the world show the importance governments and industries are putting in this clean source of energy. We, Facin Group, supplier of machinery for the fabricators of wind towers, believe in this path and we have taken the responsibility of investing a great number of resources in R&D and the creation of a wind energy division within our company to provide tailored and powerful solutions and service to the wind industry. And this webinar perfectly reflects the commitment of our company to the growth of this industry by gathering in one single event the opinions and the knowledge of important players in the industry. This way, you will get a broader view of the future challenges that lie ahead and how we should prepare for them. I hope you will find this webinar to be very useful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrea. I would like to continue now by introducing our panelists and the people leading uh, uh, the group's wind energy division. Here with us today, Andrea Comparin and Diego Morvini, both senior technical sales managers at Facin Group. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Diego. Hi, Javier. Hi, Javier, and hello, everyone. And our colleague, Rafael Soto, senior sales manager currently located in Spain, actually one of the most important hubs in the fabrication of wind towers. Hi, Rafael. Good day, everyone from Spain, and thank you all for participating in this webinar. I would like to kickstart with a question to Andrea and Diego. You are part of the Facin's Wind Energy Division. Why was it created? Javier, you have to consider that the wind industry is a global market. With a dedicated division, we can exchange information, experiences and techniques with a large number of fabricators. And at the same time, implement the solutions on our machines. Exactly. Experience. Since we installed our first wind tower system more than 20 years ago, our company has never stopped researching and developing new ideas for the wind energy industry. Thank you. And Diego, you have raised an important point, future challenges. And this is what this webinar wants to offer today. An overview of what the wind energy market will look like in the coming years and some of the challenges that the industry players, especially the supply chain, will have to deal with. So, in order to have a better understanding of what we can expect to see in the next five years, we will show you an exclusive video provided by GWEC, the Global Wind Energy Council, with the latest data from the 2021 Global Wind Report, released just a few days ago. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Feng Zhao, 
I'm the head of the strategy and the market intelligence at the GOAC, Global Wind Energy Council. Um, before I start, I just want to take this opportunity uh, to thank you, the organizer Fasin, and also uh, the group of professionals who joined this session today. Um, I'm going to take this uh, stage virtually to present the key findings uh, from uh, the previous year, 2020. Before we start, uh, let me just quickly introduce GYC. We are the voice for the global wind industry, and we are the most active lobby body uh, for the wind sector. All we're doing to, to make sure that we will have stable growth for the industry, make sure that we got a fair play, et cetera. Uh, so at the GYC in general, we have the members throughout the value chain. For example, if you look at our CEO member, that's our board members, we have the leading global offshore, onshore, onshore and offshore wind developer, and also largest ITP in the renewable space. Uh, on top of that, we have eight of the top 10 turbine OEM, they are our board members. Most recently, we have the big offshore oil and gas company join us to support the growth and global energy transition. Here you can see we, we have so many no-goods. Uh, uh, on the left side, you can see uh, GWAC also have the national and regional uh, association as our members. And now let me just uh, stretch into the key topic. Uh, that's the, what we call the 2020 highlight um, for the previous year. 2020, as uh, all of you already know, it's really, really a special year because uh, when has already passed the 90 gigawatt milestone, um, looking at the chart on the right, you can see the best year before 2020, that's 2015, due to the inflammation rush uh, in China. But in 2020, uh, even though we do believe that uh, we expect a strong growth in China, and second largest uh, onshore market, uh, United States. But again, more than 90 gigawatt new installation in a single year with a lot of uh, disruption due to the pandemic. It's really impressive as highly show the resilience of global wind industry and the supply chain, uh, et cetera, as indicate uh, the capability of uh, utility, IPP, turbine OEM to copy uh, the challenge in terms of health uh, crisis. Um, for onshore, uh, we had the best year. For offshore, even though it's the second best year, but taking into account uh, how challenging it is um, in terms of travel, etc. Uh, I mean, uh, more than six gigawatt uh, offshore installation. It's all, it's also impressive. Uh, now test. Let's take a look at the onshore market alone. Uh, even though we know it's a big year, but there are two markets we have to highlight. That's uh, China, my home country, and also United States. The two markets alone put up more than fifty, uh, uh, more than seventy-five percent of the uh, global onshore installation uh, in twenty twenty. Follow up, we do have Brazil, Norway, Germany, Spain as uh, the other leading market. I'm not going to name it, but again, look at the uh, the dollar um, chart. We can see uh, obviously uh, the two largest market, China, U.S., had the lion shares uh, last year. Uh, looking at the offshore here, as I said, even though it's not the best year ever, but the, just a slightly lower than the best year in 2019. Uh, the big contributor for the new information in 2020. That's two market, uh, China and the, the European country, the Netherlands. In China, uh, the key drivers is due to the uh, phase out of the uh, offshore fitting tariff by the end of this year. So China grid connected more than three gigawatt and make up um, slightly more than half of global new installation followed up by European market. Uh, out of China, Europe, we, we have turbine installed in South Korea and two prototype in the United States, but in terms of market share, that's relatively small. Looking at the global outlook for the uh, next five years, in general, uh, we will see slightly drop in the near term, um, but for the five years uh, outlook, 
uh, we believe that the industry will continue to grow. We have the Kaga here around 3.5%, globally speaking. Uh, if we're looking at onshore wind, it's relatively flat. It's only 0.3%. However, offshore wind market where you can see on the bar chart, it's, it's going to continue to grow uh, according to our forecast. Uh, by 2025, the annual uh, offshore wind installation um, are going to uh, be around four times as much as uh, we saw last year. So it will make up around 20 to 23% of the new installation in that year. On average, we're going to have around 94 gigawatt per year moving forward for the next five years. But this is not enough. In this report, we did identify that to reach what we call to get the global warming under control or below two degrees Celsius, we need to install on average 180 gigawatt a new in, new wind uh, in the next 10 years. Uh, even though by 2025 we will see the industry pass the milestone of 110 gigawatt, but again this is not enough. Uh, the performance delivered in the past year has indicated the supply chain could be very resilient, could quickly wrap up. However, to get the enough volume installed to meet the Paris Agreement, etc., uh, what we need to do right now, uh, in, uh, urgently, that's the policy. Uh, I'm going to quickly work through uh, the turbine technology trend. We all know the market is growing, but also due to the cost of energy, uh, the industry has a lot of pressure in terms of burn down of LCOE. Um, to achieve the goals, I think one of the priority is in terms of technology innovation. Uh, internally, we have the uh, growth curve in terms of technology for both onshore and offshore. But here, uh, I only took the offshore technology roadmap as an example. Uh, previous years, at the beginning, you know, we have kilowatt installed for offshore. And then six megawatt or five to six megawatt become the uh, largest multi megawatt uh, turbine. However, looking at the pipeline today, at the leading uh, turbine OEM, they see the top three out, out, outside China GE, SGRE, Vista, they all introduced the new model. GE has upgraded the Halia X from 12 megawatt to 14. Siemens last summer. Pre summer launched the 14 to 15 megawatt model. Um, follow up actually a couple of months ago in February, Vista as also a key player on Anshul took over the full um, states from MHA Vista from Mitsubishi, now become uh, a key player in the offshore sector as well, introduced the, the 15 to 17 megawatt turbines and the commercialization are going to start. Uh, from 2024, we can see a lot of competition. Um, but looking at the market growth, I think uh, the the growth of industry do not necessarily translate into the number of unit. And for audience join this session today, probably that's that's not a good news. But I think we, we need to aware of the technology trend specifically for offshore. As I mentioned, uh, we're going to see double, triple. Uh, maybe even four times as much as the offshore uh, sites uh, in five years. But again, in terms of a number of units for the foundations, for towers, uh, probably you won't see the same trend, mainly due to uh, the uh, increased size of uh, the uh, new uh, technology. All I'm saying here is that I think as a component supplier specific for towers, I think it makes sense to continuously monitoring the growth. Offshore, it's getting bigger. Actually, onshore uh, market um, size is getting bigger as well in terms of turbine rating. Today, uh, we have something around 2.7 uh, megawatt per unit, globally speaking. Uh, but we believe if we exclude the Chinese market by 2025, properly, the average onshore turbine size will be 4 megawatt. Again, due to the limit of the time, I'm going to stop here. I really hope uh, the information I deliver today will help you to understand the market outlook and also the trends of the technology and its impact for the global supply chain. And good luck and good health. Thank you so much.
We would like to thank all the people of GWEC, especially Mr. Feng Xiao and Ms. Alisa Peck, for their contribution to this webinar. Andrea, uh, what do you think of what we have just seen in the presentation? What is shown, Javier, is that the growth of the wind energy market will bring incredible changes to the supply chain. And together with big changes come big challenges. And I believe it is a responsibility of every player in the industry to contribute with the solution to the big challenges of the future. And what better to understand what lies ahead than to listen to one of the biggest players in the energy industry, Iberdrola. We have the pleasure of having with us today in our webinar Mr. Giancarlo Grolli, civil and structural engineer of Iberdrola Renewables. He has prepared a presentation for our viewers that I believe will be very interesting for all of us to watch. Uh, hi Giancarlo, uh, how are you doing? Uh, could you first introduce yourself to the viewers? Good morning, my name is Giancarlo Groli and I'm part of the design management team of the foundation's department within the offshore wind business of Iberdrola. I'm a structural engineer by background. Can you describe uh, Iberdrola and the division you work for? It's a vertically integrated global energy leader committed to low emission and renewable technologies. We own and operate uh, our uh, energy plants, uh, then distribute and uh, uh, sell the energy. Our uh, uh, key figures uh, as per uh, December uh, 2019 are a 36.4 billion euros revenue uh, with a 3.4 uh, billion euros net income and 52 gigawatts of installed capacity. In terms of uh, uh, renewable energy, uh, Iberdrola owns uh, 32 gigawatts of installed uh, capacity and plans to develop further 6.6 .6 gigawatt by 2022. Divided by uh, geographical areas uh, with focus on uh, uh, European markets uh, and uh, American markets. In terms of uh, offshore wind, our focus right now is on uh, uh, Europe uh, with uh, uh, a large presence uh, in UK, uh, but also developing uh, and operating uh, wind farms uh, uh, in the Baltic. Uh, we also are developing our presence in the US uh, and uh, have a uh, uh, prospect for uh, Japan and Brazil. What are the changes and therefore the challenges you see happening in the near future? Uh, in terms of uh, uh, the engineering, of our uh, wind farms, uh, we usually um, take on ourselves the uh, design uh, contracts and uh, uh, and also uh, procure by ourselves uh, the uh, the fabrication and supply of the foundations. Uh, the trend we are seeing in uh, uh, in a turbine foundation is that the uh, monopiles uh, are, uh, um, are playing a uh, major role in, uh, uh, in foundations for turbines. In fact, the monopiles, when feasible, are generally regarded as the most cost-effective solution for uh, uh, foundations. A uh, problem we are seeing with the monopiles uh, right now is that uh, uh, turbines uh, are getting bigger. Uh, in fact, the rated power of uh, the turbine has steadily, steadily ramped up during last year, and this, of course, uh, uh, came together with uh, uh, an increased uh, rot rotor dimension, and uh, uh, there, therefore an increased hub height, increased loads, uh, and uh, increase uh, stiffness requirements uh, for the foundation. Uh, this uh, is combined with the fact that uh, the uh, good sites, uh, shallow, close to shore, with favorable geology, 
has already been taken uh, during last year. So when we combined uh, uh, the increased uh, um, stiffness requirements from the turbine and the increased, uh, say, water depth, uh, soil, uh, um, uh, soil softness, uh, we have that in order to uh, make the uh, monopile work, the uh, seabed diameter must follow the same uh, upsizing trend. And this uh, brings us to the current demand for uh, uh, up to 12 meter diameter monopiles uh, and weights uh, in excess of uh, 2000 tons. Then uh, we have uh, a limitation on the uh, diameter of an over thickness uh, value. For instance, a typical value is uh, 130. This means that for a uh, for a monopile with a 10 meter diameter, the minimum thickness is 77 mil, uh, even in locations uh, where we wouldn't need it uh, strictly for uh, structural design. Uh, this uh, uh, restricts the uh, supply chain on both plates and fabricators. Uh, with the commercial and program risks uh, for uh, us, the client. Uh, and also have uh, implication on kind weight because uh, we'll uh, um, increase, uh, uh, of course, the uh, weight, the minimum weight of the can. And uh, uh, so implies that uh, we have to uh, limit the length of the can and uh, uh, introduce more circumferential welds which we try, of course, to avoid. What are the solutions then Iberdrola will require from the tower manufacturers? How could the supply chain, and in particular the bending and assembly process, help us with this? For instance, by improving the uh, tolerances. Currently, uh, the standards uh, uh, consider a misalignment of uh, uh, 4 mil and for the uh, out of roundness uh, part. If we were able to reduce this even to three mil, uh, this would imply a substantial improvement in fatigue design, uh, helping us bringing down the, um, the plate thickness uh, and therefore the uh, can weights uh, uh, or, circumfer or the number of circumferential welds. We could also improve the assembly lines uh, by exploring new configuration. Uh, we could improve uh, assembly time, uh, the maximum count weight, uh, the accuracy, uh, which uh, will all revert in better level levelized cost of energy and uh, uh, reduced commercial and program risks for the final client. What else could we do? We could also make sure that uh, uh, DT ratios are not limiting, for instance, uh, by exploring vertical bending. Also, the speed of rolling uh, uh, is very important in the sense that we uh, are able to uh, bend uh, more cans at a given time and uh, uh, ultimately uh, produce more uh, uh, monopiles. Uh, also, making sure that uh, the uh, the plate width is not uh, uh, governing um, so that we are able to uh, maximize the uh, can uh, length and therefore uh, reduce the circumferential welds. And most of all, uh, improving the reliability of the process, uh, of the machinery, and uh, uh, thereby uh, minimizing uh, downtime and uh, uh, program risks uh, for us. Giancarlo, any final remarks? Okay, so uh, as we saw, there are a number of uh, uh, aspects. Uh, everyone plays a role. Uh, balance uh, ha has to be struck uh, between uh, all of them, uh, bearing in mind the final aim, which is achieving the best uh, levelized cost of energy, uh, which uh, will enable uh, us, uh, the clients, the operators uh, building uh, more uh, offshore wind farms which will help us uh, achieving our goals in terms of uh, uh, a transition to a, a greener uh, um, power to a greener future. 
Thank you, Giancarlo, for your contribution. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Great challenges ahead, indeed. Yes, Javier. And as we have heard uh, from Giancarlo, a lot of the ideal places for installing wind farms has been taken. And therefore, in order to keep uh, growing, technology has to provide in form of uh, bigger turbines uh, and therefore bigger, uh, bigger and taller towers uh, the answers. This creates incredible challenges. We will hear now from one of the biggest manufacturers of offshore foundation, Sieve Group from Holland, about these challenges and what solution they offered to the industry. What started with one man's ambition in 1948 and his constant drive to do things better has grown to be an international listed company. Building upon his courage to explore new possibilities and constantly redefine craftsmanship, we stay on the front lines, pushing us into the wind. It's the decades of experience that have made us the specialist in offshore foundations we are today. By expanding our services with engineering and logistics, we're now able to deliver total solutions for offshore wind foundations. Extending further and further on international seas, meeting new partners and clients every day. They have made us innovative and treasure values at the same time such as elaborate preparation and communication with our clients, believing in the strength of teamwork, safe working conditions, and the people that make it work. Because in the end, it's our personal drive that makes us all search for new solutions every day. Simply wanting to do things better. SIF, shaping tomorrow, performing today. Very nice video. Let us move on now with the interview. Hi, Michelle. Could you introduce yourself uh, and uh, a quick overview of your job at SIF? Hello, my name is Michelle Kirschens. I am Product Strategy Director of SIF. At SIF, uh, we tend to innovate our company uh, because our market environment is changing all the time. That's my responsibility and to work on a view for our company on the mid and long term future of SIF. Thank you, Michel. What can you tell us about SIF and its production capabilities? SIF is market leader in monopiles, meaning that we have produced monopiles uh, as from 1999 until today, having produced over 2000 monopiles um, since. As a market leader, uh, we have to constantly innovate ourselves, reinvent ourselves in order to support the industry um, towards a lower cost of energy. That's our ultimate goal, to fulfill a significant role in the total value chain of uh, foundations and offshore wind in order to cut out costs and cut out inefficiency and therefore uh, perform the necessary actions in order to lower the total cost of energy. Great. Talking about the wind energy projects and the future of the industry, what do you think are the critical points in the supply chain? I think the main challenge for SIF is quite similar to the challenges of anyone else who is active in this value chain. Meaning that whether you produce monopiles like SIF, or whether you are a transport and installation contractor installing foundations, or whether you are a turbine manufacturer, the challenges are quite similar to the total value chain, meaning that um, we see a change in our market um, on three axes. Basically, we see the market by itself growing in size, so meaning there's more gigawatts of offshore wind that will be deployed in future. The second axis of change is that whilst the market is growing in volume, we also see the product that we have to produce growing in size. So monopiles get bigger due to the fact that the market is driven by bigger and bigger turbines. And the bigger turbines are driven by the fact that this is the best way to make the market future uh, uh, subsidy free. And the third axis to which we have to respond as SIF Similarly to all our uh, colleagues in the value chain is the fact that we used to have a market which is centralized around uh, the North Sea. 
And the market is now getting global. So we have to uh, have a vision on production capacity in Asia and production capacity in, in the US. So basically, we have to uh, constantly monitor the market in three axes, the growing demand in gigawatts, the growing size of the monopile, and the fact that the market is going from a, let's say, local North Sea centralized market towards a global market. Michel, you mentioned the growth in size of the monopiles. What do you think the industry will be targeting in the next five years? Where is the limit? Considering the size of monopiles that we see coming in the future, they are dependent on the size of the turbines under which we have to uh, supply these monopiles. And we now see from all major players the new generation of platforms emerging. For instance, we've just uh, booked the order for Dogger Bank A and B, under which you will see the first Haliada X uh, 13, 14 megawatt uh, uh, turbine. This gives us a clear indication to where the journey is going. Um, however, Dogger Bank is on shallow waters, and we will see similar turbine sizes, uh, up to 15 megawatt on bigger uh, water depths as well, meaning that we foresee the monopile to grow to 11, 12 meters in diameter, two and a half, three thousand tons weight, and up, up to a length of 100 to 120 meters. So what does SIF propose as solution for these current challenges and what is coming in the future? As always, SIF has had a vision on the future before the future happens. So we have to be able to be ready for the next generation of turbines and the next generation of monopiles before the actual demand is there. And that's why we are constantly uh, changing our factories and adapting our factories towards these new demands and new sizes. For that, we buy new equipment like new rollers with Farchin uh, in order to, uh, to have equipment which is dependent 24-7 because we are a 24-7 company due to the fact that we have uh, a large investment every year in order to catch up or be ahead of uh, the market. Is there a project uh, uh, you can talk about and how will you approach it? Indeed, as I've said, Dogger Bank A and B are really reference projects for the future for us, in which we see the clearly need for very big monopiles, uh, not only in size of diameter or weight or length, but also in size of accuracy. So the monopile has been growing over time. However, the tolerances to which we have to adhere are not growing with the size of the monopile. Uh, typically, um, flanges and the flatness of flanges, they stay very, very severe. So we have to develop technology in order to keep these flanges within the required tolerances. And only when you actually see the real uh, interaction with your customer and the engineer of the customer uh, for the new generation of turbines, then we all, all see what is necessary. Up till the point of Dogger Bank, we saw a lot of reference uh, drawings, but it's only the detailed design of Dogger Bank that has really learned uh, what is required in the future. And that's always how we've done it. We've tried to be ahead of uh, everyone in order to, to get the first order in the next generation, which is maybe not the easiest way, but you, you learn a lot as quickly as possible. And that's why we are not afraid of challenges uh, in the future. Thank you for your contribution, Michel. Andrea, uh, Michel mentioned that one of the key points to stay ahead as a leader was to invest in production facilities and he mentioned specifically rollers. Why? That's right, Javier. It's a very interesting case that started long ago when SIV was looking for a solution to improve their productivity of heavy duty cones for monopies. The choice was uh, between four, uh, four and three rolls uh, machines, uh, two technologies that they already knew very well. The combination of the need of rolling heavy-duty cones together with the extra rolling capacity for the future growth of the thicknesses pushed them in the selection of a three rows machine variable axis. The machine is 4.2 meter long and has a capacity of more than 200 millimeter, having a bending force of 5,000 tons. That means that it can do perfect pre-bending on all the common plates for monopies nowadays and in future like the 150mm plate tested in 
S460. The machine was equipped with the Siemens CNC, but also with advanced radio control, with screen and proportional controls. Now we can see the typical pre-bending operation with minimum offset and for the highest accuracy. You can see the camera system for checking the plate alignment of big cans and cones. And finally, we see the rolling face with the symmetric rolls. And now you can see probably the most interesting part, the final result. That is a perfect pre-bending with the, the flat, super short, in this case less than one time the thickness. So what were the objectives of SIF besides capacity of acquiring such a machine? SIF was looking for a company that could uh, give them the solutions they were looking for, which they found in Facin. We cooperated at all levels uh, to achieve the following. To maximize the machine precision, special geometry were designed to minimize uh, the distances between the rolls. To guarantee the highest reliability and no downtime at all, special bearings and bushing solutions with optimized lubrication system were adopted. To maximize performances and speed, the complete hydraulic system was oversized, increasing torque and speed up to 10 meters per minute. And then, to optimize cone production, increased inclination and special conical devices were designed for the cone alignment. And finally, to boost uh, the cone production, special automation system were developed. So, we built a completely tailor-made machine with the target of putting SIF one step ahead of the competitors. Let me go a bit deeper regarding the cone automation. Cone rolling with a thickness of more than 100 mm, conicity up to 12 degrees, and diameters of 8-12 m with super tight tolerances is not an easy job. These cones are frequently rolled and then calibrated to match the tolerances and correct the defects due to the long seam weld and due to the cone axial misalignment. Well, together with uh, the SIF super skilled operators, our experienced technicians could develop new bending techniques that could uh, guarantee higher accuracy on the conical bending process and shorter time in the calibration process, up to 50% time saving. Andrea, you handled this project, so it must make you very proud. A nice success story, I would say, confirmed by the fact that after the first giant, SIF confirmed the preference for Facin for a second one. Now, there's a lot to say also about the assembly and installation of offshore foundations. So, we have the great pleasure of having with us Eric Finet from Smulders, one of the biggest European steel construction company focused on offshore wind structures, part of a FAS group. Let us start uh, first uh, with uh, Smulders corporate video that shows what kind of company Smulders is. We believe in passion. Passion is like an intricate dance that arouses all the senses. It brings the best out of people and makes dreams come true. Passion sees no obstacles, but merely stepping stones to a new solution. That is what Smolders has been doing for over 50 years, making the impossible possible when it comes to highly specialized steel constructions. We engineer, we produce, we supply, and we assemble, because it enables our clients to realize their projects and reach their goals. Like dance partners, our 1,000 employees move together in synchronicity to deliver an impeccable routine. 
Our passion for steel makes us a trusted partner for complex, large-scale wind structures, bridges, industrial constructions, and signature architectural projects. No mountain too high, no sea too deep, and no project too challenging. We put our heads and hearts where the challenges are. We move with the wind. Wind power has fueled our passion for over 20 years. We deliver a full range of services for wind energy, from engineering and fabrication to complete turnkey solutions of substations, jacket foundations, and monopile transition pieces. The magic happens completely in-house. You can admire the results of the seamless synergies across our facilities, embracing the North Sea. But new exciting markets are looming at the horizon. Innovation is central to what we do. We put technology at the service of our clients' projects, but also the planet. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals are the soundtrack for all our endeavors. It takes two to tango. We take the satisfaction of our clients to heart, but also the well-being of our employees. Safety, teamwork, and respect are some of the dance moves where we excel. But our ultimate motivation is our passion to achieve great results in unique projects all over the world. Without passion, there would be no perfection, no excitement, no love. Without passion, there would be no smolders. So now we move to the interview. Hi, Eric. Can you introduce yourself uh, to the participants of this webinar? And uh, what do you do for uh, Smulders? Thank you, Andrea, for uh, inviting me. My name is uh, Eric Finet, and I'm the business development manager for Smulders. Smulders is a leading fabricator of offshore wind foundations and substations. And my role is to see where the market is going to in the next two, three years. So what Smulders will be fabricating, let's say, 2023, 24 onward. Thank you, Eric. What can you tell us about the Smulders, its capabilities, and the reasons company would work with the Smulders in their wind-related projects? Well, Andrea, Smulders, as I said, is a leading fabricator in Europe, but also in Asia for offshore wind foundations and substations. Until now, we have fabricated more than 2,200 offshore wind foundations amongst 160 jackets. For the substations, we are at project number 35, mostly with partners, but half of the European offshore wind uh, farms are equipped with substations fabricated by Smulders. Smulders is an integrated company with own engineering resources. Fabrication is almost entirely in our own hands. Uh, as a result, for example, during the present uh, pandemic, we can keep producing. We are not depending on uh, subcontractors, but we have all production means in our own hand. Also, our, the location of our yards in Europe, in Poland, in the Netherlands, in Belgium, in the UK and France ensures that we can deliver close to the market, close to our customers. Eric, the people watching this webinar would like to know about the future challenges in the wind industry. What is your point of view in this regard? Well, Andrea, I see three main challenges for our industry, let's say, in the medium term. The first one is the UK market and the requirements for local content. Smulders has anticipated to this challenge by acquiring the Hadrian Yard in Newcastle 
uh, upon time at Wall's end, so we can really produce UK uh, fabricated uh, foundations. The yard presently uh, is equipped for jacket fabrication, but we have a program now to turn it into a transition piece and substation uh, construction yard. A second challenge is floating wind. Floating wind obviously will come in the next few years and will take its share of the foundation types. Well, there we have our yard in Fossurmeer, in the south of France, in the Mediterranean, where we already produce six floating foundations for uh, demonstration projects in the Mediterranean. But also the yard in Newcastle and in, on the mainland, in Belgium and the Netherlands, are very well equipped to produce these big steel foundations. A third challenge we are gearing up for is hydrogen and its place in the energy uh, transition. And if we talk about hydrogen, we can have the electrolyzers on board of the substations, but also we are working on designs to put electrolyzers into the foundations of wind turbines so that with the excess energy, we can produce uh, hydrogen very close to the location where the electrical power is produced. UK market, floating wind and hydrogen are the three main challenges for the immediate future of offshore wind and the fabricators. Floating foundations are developing quickly. Can you tell us more about their fabrication? Well, Andrea, the main uh, technical challenge in floating foundation is to make this type of, uh, this foundation type ready for serial production. Floating foundations can only be competitive if just like bottom fixed foundations, we can produce three or four like transition pieces a week or one or two jackets per week. Eh? We need to fabricate uh, floating foundations in an industrial way. So we are able to produce at least one, preferably two foundations per week. The, we are at the moment, we look at a number of designs, five or six. We also have our own design and uh, our challenge at the moment is to make all these designs fabrication friendly, serial fabrication friendly, so that the, the, the various types can be produced in an industrial way or at the yard in France for the French projects, or at the yard in the UK for the UK uh, projects. We are looking not only to the design, but also to the supply chain, if the local supply chain can uh, produce the modules uh, to complete and deliver these floating uh, foundations. These are the main challenges to integrate the supply chain with the design and the requirements for uh, serial production of floating foundations. Thank you, Eric. Uh, very interesting information indeed. Um, Andrea, I see Smulders develops uh, several projects all over Europe. Yes, Smulders, part of the IFAS group, manufactures uh, steel constructions in general, jackets, suction buckets, transition pieces, floating foundations, and much more. So in terms of rolling, Facin supplied uh, the IFAS group with uh, different machines in different plants. A three rolls variable axis rolling machines for their production facility in Spain. And uh, four rolls CNC for their production facilities in Belgium, equipped with a feeding table automatic plate alignment system, top and side support uh, for cans and cones, uh, with a clamping system for uh, tack welding. All technical features that Diego will explain later on. 
Thank you, Andrea. Uh, so, Diego, before uh, you talk about all these technical advances for plate rolling automation systems, and we introduce our new speaker, I would like you to give us an overview on the Chinese market, which you know so well and you work with so closely. Well, Avia, like we all saw in the presentation from GWAG, the growth of new power capacity in China has been great and that let us all impressive. I mean, 71.7 gigabat, the total grid connected capacity in 2020, of which 45.4 gigabat generated by new wind turbines. And all this during last year, amid COVID, a monumental achievement. Most of the installation have been onshore but with the offshore wind feeding tariff due to the expire by the end of 2021, we expect to see major growth in the Chinese offshore wind sector this year. So the next company we will introduce to our viewers represent so well this tendency, these two worlds, the onshore and offshore wind energy markets. Fuchuan Ifa New Energy located in Fujian, China. Let's start first with a video that shows the potential of this company. We will now learn more about the Chinese market from Mr. Guo Ping, Deputy General Manager of the company. Hi, Mr. Guo. 
Can you give our viewers a brief introduction of Fuchuan Yifan New Energy? Fujian Fuchuan Yifan New Energy is a company that is produced by the Fuchuan Yifan New Energy. It is located in the Chinese Sea of Fujian Sea. It is a company that is produced by the Fuchuan Yifan New Energy. It is a company that is produced by the Fuchuan Yifan New Energy. It is a company that is produced by the Fuchuan Yifan New Energy. 福船一方为国有混合水之企业，既有国有企业的技术资金政策优势，也有民营企业的决策灵活、高效执行的优势。Thank you so much, Mr. Guo. Can you tell us about your range of production? 福船一方的主营业务为风电装备制造，主要以海上风电、单桩、导管架、基础过渡段为主，也做其他的船舶、桥梁、重型钢结构。包括核电、石化单元模块。福船一方的这个生产能力，车间的生产能力，生产车间共有十六条线，钢结构有八条线，年钢材的加工量二十万吨，海风塔桶一年的话是六百吨，呃，六百套，大型单管装四十八根，过渡段一百四十四根每年，导管架可以做到二十四套。这个我们是广东阳江沙塔的这个单管装，它的重量的话是一千六百吨，长度的话一百米，它的直径啊是在七米五到八米五之间，它的板厚的一个加厚度的话是九十五毫米，啊，现在的话已经做好了，要等着往外面发货。And what changes you have seen in your business, and how you have adapted to it? 福船一帆与法赛的合作已经有十多年的一个历史。我们第一台卷板机是用于陆上的，在二零零九年购买。那二零幺八年的时候，福船一帆与法赛再次深入合作，采购了法赛的四 H 一 P S 三六零 W T 四星卷板机。该设备用于海上六兆瓦、七兆瓦、八兆瓦、十兆瓦的塔筒和基础段生产，最大的一个加工能力达到了一百一十五后。毫米厚，宽度三米。好，马赛的这台四星滚啊，用到我们的海上单管装啊，导管架、重型的塔筒的一个生产。目前的话，已经制作了国内最大的单管装，就是我们刚才在码头看到的话，一千六百五十吨的这个单管装的，它的厚度达到九十五毫米的这个厚度制作。Do you provide to customers locally only or also internationally? 合作客户啊，在国内的话是三峡集团、中广和集团等各大的话央企集团。主机合作的主机厂有金峰、云阳、湘电、韵达，很多这个国内的主机厂。国外的这个优秀的一流的主机厂也有威斯塔斯、戈美萨、恩朗。都是我们的合作伙伴，我们也是他们的在中国的合作供应商之一。Thank you, Mr. Wu Bin, for giving us all an overview of the production of towers in China. So back to you, Diego.、Uh, what we have seen during the interview is that、uh, Yifan is prepared for both markets, onshore and offshore. Is this a reflection of the Chinese market? This is a clear example. Of how Fuchuan Yifan was able to adapt to the evolution of the market by moving quickly from production of light onshore towers to EV offshore towers and XL monopiles. Pachin followed the customer during this process by offering different technological solutions. And from an engineering point of view, it was truly interesting because it was necessary to consider new variables different from the past. Rolling conical shells for offshore towers with high accuracy and minimum cycle time was the reason Ifan decided to invest in new accessory, specifically designed for offshore wind. Moving from the concept of a single plate rolling machine to a much broader concept of rolling line, Pachin Wind Tower Automation System provides a package of solution and accessories to guarantee 
high gas production speed uh, together with uh, an automatic bending cycle. Horizontal or titlable motorized feeding table with a plate alignment system using smart sensors and cons realignment control by CNC. Extendable tables with tailored modules to accommodate the new requirement of the industry that is played with length over 40 meters and width over 20 meters. Tiltable top support for a large diameter with over 100 tons capacity, able to follow the cone angle, prevents overlapping of the plate at final rolling stage, avoiding the use of overhead crane during rolling operation. Robustly built side support with single or double joint extension with tiltable rolls for a perfect contact even with the conical plates prevent the reopening of thin material roll at big diameter. EV duty clamps are used to align plate edges for a faster tack welding and the hooking device is used in case the roll cans need to be slightly reopened. Bending hundreds of cans every month can only be achieved with a rolling package like the innovative Facin Wind Tower Automation System, studied to provide manufacturer with reliability, speed, accuracy, and automation, able to work 24-7 while capable of being handled by a single operator, which of course must go end-to-end -end with cost reduction. Great explanation. But China, although a giant in the wind energy industry, is not the only one in Asia. Uh, what about uh, the markets? Supported by Taiwanese government to source 20% of electricity from renewable by 2025, Taiwan is established itself as one of the world's fastest growing new offshore wind markets. A significant step has been the first offshore wind farm of 128 megawatt called Formosa One project that kicked off in March 2017. Taiwanese manufacturer needed to invest in several complete rolling lines to produce jackets leg and piles on large scale. The reason why top player from Taiwan choose Fachin is because the company worked together with the customer as a consultant, providing from the beginning the most critical technical information. That is to offer the possibility to have a fair technical comparison between the different solutions available, to avoid incorrect evaluation due to missing and misleading data, and to help the customer obtain the fastest return of investment. So back to Europe and the uh, onshore market. Uh, although there is an immense growth in the offshore wind market, uh, onshore is still pushing forward and the competition is ferocious. That's correct, Javier. As confirmed by GVEC, offshore wind is booming in many countries, but also onshore wind is still uh, growing around the globe. We know this for a fact, as we have delivered hundreds of uh, wind tower lines to many top players like uh, Windar, GRI, Tecno Aranda, Pestas, Arcosa, Chimtas, Tempsan, Enercon, Ziag, KGW and many others. So let us listen to what uh, Mr. Bergman of uh, KGW has to say about the most competitive job in the supply chain the onshore tower production. Hello, Mr. Bergman. Can you introduce yourself and uh, what you do for KGW? Hello, my name is Robert Bergman. I work at KGW, Schweriner Maschinen- and Anlagenbau GmbH. I've been since 2016 as a vorbereiter for the production here. The firm had its founding date 1948 as Industriewerk. It had 1993 die Produktion der Stahlrohrtürme für Windenergieanlagen aufgenommen und führt dieses bis heute erfolgreich fort. Please briefly introduce KGW and the capacities. 
Seit 1993 ist KGW im Bereich der Umwelt- und Energietechnik tätig. Größter Geschäftsbereich ist hier die Produktion von Stahlrotüren. Die KGW verarbeitet mehr als 250 Turmsektionen jährlich. Die Längen einer Sektion sind maximal 35 Meter. Es sind Sektionsgewichte von 80 Tonnen. Die Durchmesser dieser Sektion betragen 4.300 mm. Also im Jahr werden 20.000 Tonnen Stahl im KGW verarbeitet. Die Stahlrotürme werden nach Kundenspezifikation gefertigt. In your opinion, what are the technical challenges for onshore towers production and how is KGW positioned to be competitive in this highly competitive market in the future? Also die KGW arbeitet in allen Geschäfts- und äh, Fertigungsprozessen entsprechend nationaler, europäischer und internationaler Zertifizierung und Zulassung. Ähm, unsere Stahlrautürme werden in hoher Qualität äh, nach allen ISO-Standards gefertigt. Das heißt, für uns sind auch gewisse Toleranzen einzuhalten, wo man vermutet, dass sie gar nicht so klein sind. Ich beispielsweise, wenn unsere Verbindungsflansche, unsere kleinsten, rund 3000 mm, äh, haben eine Ebenheitstoleranz von 0,3 mm einzuhalten. Unsere größten Flansche, Verbindungsflansche von 4000 bis 4300 mm, haben Toleranzen von 1,5 mm einzuhalten, was wirklich nicht viel ist. Sicherlich ist da der Prozess der Fertigung von den Flanschen äh, spielt eine Rolle, aber auch eine große Rolle spielt unsere Rundheit in diesem Moment. Unser Verform, dieses zylindrische und konische Verform, muss eine gewisse Rundheit mitbringen, um diese Toleranzen zu erreichen. Die einzelnen Ronden oder auch Mäntel genannt, miteinander zu verbinden, müssen ein hohes Maß an Rundheit mitbringen, um einfach auch unsere Toleranzen einzuhalten. Ähm, und da ist es natürlich wichtig, unsere Mitarbeiter immer wieder zu schulen für die Zukunft, immer weiter auch investieren in neue Maschinen logischerweise, um auf dem Markt auch gut dazustehen. Um dies alles zu einem guten Produkt zu machen, ist das halt wichtig, dass unsere Mitarbeiter geschult werden. And uh, which production improvements do you see as necessary? To master the challenges of the future. Ja, der Markt geht in allen, in allen Branchen immer nach vorne oder höher, schneller, weiter. Das, dazu muss man sich auch gewissen Dingen anpassen. Zum Beispiel Blechdicken, verschiedene Blechdicken, die immer höher werden, immer breiter, immer stärker auch werden. Ähm, dazu ist es vielleicht nötig, gewisse Maschinen, die ein gewissen Bereich von bis abdecken, wo der mittlere der, der optimale ist, vielleicht zu optimieren. Maschinen, die einen standardisierten Unterbau oder ein Fundament haben, um als Firma auch schnell zu reagieren, wo man sagen kann, wir müssen doch die Maschine austauschen, wo man dann ein standardisiertes Fundament hat und sagen kann, das geht schnell ohne lange Wartezeiten, ohne lange Ausfallzeiten. Das ist heutzutage just in time, klar. Oder auch Maschinen, die programmiert sind direkt zu diesem Produkt, wo man das selber einstellen kann, die gewisse Messeinheiten drin haben, dass diese Prozesssicherheit mehr zur Maschine geht als auf den Bediener. Das werden Herausforderungen sein, die wir in der Zukunft meistern müssten. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bergmann. Now, after hearing these uh, speakers, we can conclude that cost reduction in form of uh, production speed and efficiency is the only way to obtain cost-effective energy that at the end uh, will be acceptable to the general public. And everyone has stressed the big challenge ahead as bigger turbines that push the size, weight, and tolerances in the constructions of towers. Fachin Group, as a supplier of uh, automated system for plate rolling, a very important equipment in any wind tower manufacturing factory, 
um, and our level of expertise is around the fabrication of these towers for the onshore or offshore market. So we would like to bring to you as well the views of other players uh, on the supply chain, uh, manufacturers of machines that affect the level of efficiency in the fabrication of these towers. Um, an important uh, part in the process of fabrication wind towers is the uh, preparation of the plates before rolling them. As the plates get longer and thicker, also the challenges related to the preparation of these plates. Let us hear from uh, Joshua Invernizzi, Senior Regional Sales Manager of uh, FICEP on the future of the industry and the solutions they are providing for the tower manufacturers. Good morning, my name is Joshua Invernizzi and I am sales manager at FICEP Italy. We are a worldwide leader in the production of automatic solutions for the processing of construction elements for the steel structural industry, such as beams, pipes, plates and angles. FICEP was founded in 1930 in the town of Gazzada, close to Milan, and since then our cornerstone has always been the internal production of our products. Today, we can count on more than 145,000 square meters in which we carry out the integrated production of our products, such as designing, engineering, mechanical processing, surface treatment and assembly, as well as the supply of spare parts and after-sales service globally. We approach the worldwide market, since our export share is more than 90%, with the aim to offer to our clients a complete range of solutions for the steel construction, from the most simple machines addressed to those companies who have moderate production needs and look for higher flexibility, up to the full integrated and automatic system for extremely demanding production requirements, controlled and managed by our steel project softwares. Our main market fields are industrial and commercial buildings, bridges, agricultural and dirt moving machines, transmission towers, offshore platforms, and wind towers. With particular reference to the wind towers world, the nowadays challenge is to satisfy the demand of more powerful towers, which means higher towers having bigger diameters, considerable material thickness, and extremely tight tolerances. Feature faces this challenge with its own solution in the pre-rolling plate preparation process, which typically includes plate transfer from the external stocking area to the shop blasting machine thanks to our automatic or semi-automatic handling system, including roller rays and cross-transfer tables, shop blasting system, plate transfer with our handling system to an interoperational buffer, thermal cutting with our chrono system, chamfering, milling, uh, scribing, marking with our energy system. Our chronos, with a range from 3 meters up to 4.5 meters wide plates, can be equipped with two plasma heads with independent cards and up to four oxy-cutting torches. It allows to cut plates in rectangular, trapezoidal, or carved shapes to prepare them for rolling, as well as to realize the well-prepped chamfer thanks to its 3D plasma bevelet, triple oxy torch, or high-speed milling head. This integrated solution more compact and affordable, is suggested in the case of less significant thicknesses. For wind towers which require higher thicknesses and with more strict welding characteristics, the processing of the plate edges after the thermal cutting operation might be required. In this case, feature proposes to realize the chamfer on the energy that is a gantry system especially designed for high thickness chamfering. Energy range goes from 3 meters up to 4.5 meters wide plates. And this is the project evolution of our gantry system for welded beams required for the steel bridges, for which we are worldwide leaders. Its main structure is therefore extremely stiff and robust. Energy is equipped with two special milling heads designed with variable speed planetary gearbox to allow to use the spindles not only with lower speed and die torque, up to 1,300 newton meters, but to reach also a speed of 4,000 RPM for drilling, marking, and scribing operation. In fact, 
using the same milling heads, it's possible to carry out old scrappy lines for welding points, or miles for electrical cables, or stairs, or other accessory fastening inside the tower. The marking technology doesn't affect the material. The machine allows to carry out all the chamfers typically required for the pre-rolling plate preparation, such as Y, K, X, and J shapes, according to the library preloaded in the CNC, which also includes all the different plate shapes to allow easy onboard programming without involving the technical office. It's an extremely robust and functional machine. The tool changer is studied to be outside the body, over the race, to facilitate the operator in the tool changing operation. In fact, it doesn't need to access the machine, but it can move the spindle closer up to the very edge of the body for an easy and safe tool changing. The magnets, which keep the plate to be processed in the right position, can be easily repositioned along the table to accommodate the exact plate shape. The Bati positioning speed can reach up to 30 meters per minute, guaranteeing a quick plate probing and a very high processing speed. Taking into consideration the always higher request for offshore wind towers with very thick plates up, up to 150 millimeters, featured is the ideal solution, both in terms of thermal cutting with our chronos range and of milling with our energy range. Moreover, the modular table, which can be extended over 24 meters, can accommodate plates with different lengths or more plates on different working stations. This is extremely important due to the request of always higher wind towers with bigger diameters. FICEP can supply single thermal cutting lines, milling lines, shop blasting lines, material handling, as well as the complete solution for the whole pre-rolling phase fully managed by our steel project softwares. We hope that this brief overview allows you to learn more about FICEP and our solution. And please, don't hesitate to contact our offices for any additional information. Thank you and see you soon. Thank you, FICEP and Joshua, for their insightful explanation on the plate preparation process. So, Fabricating towers capable of supporting critical environmental conditions require thicker and higher strength steel plates. In order to keep production cost down and efficiency up, solutions in welding of these large towers are strongly required. Now let's see what Mr. Janssen from Blaol has to say about the welding solutions. Blauholm is a turnkey manufacturer of equipment for tower and monopile business and has been that since uh, 2005. Um, my name is Jesper Hansen. I've been in this business for the last 30 years, the last 10 years for Blauholm. I consider myself a welding specialist. The challenges we get from our customers, from you, is what is the capacity, how much can you carry, what's the default rate, the manual processes that you need to automize, the uh, intermittence you need to raise. So the partnership that we normally do with our customers is develop the solutions with uh, some of the leading producers of uh, manufacturers of towers, monopiles throughout the years. We have raised the capacity by for instance, having the four-headed multi-seam machine, uh, the twin boom, uh, the thousand kilo liner system, and the, the, the thousand kilo big bag system. The benefits for you would be to have more welding and less downtime, less uh, filling up the machine with flux or wires, etc. 
Our mindset is optimizing through innovative solutions. We want to be close to you. We want to be close to the customer. We want to develop and cooperate. You need to be strong and have a strong position in this business. And that's why we want to work with you. Today I'm going to talk about the uh, double uh, twin boom, where you have the uh, uh, two heads on one column, which gives you the benefit of welding on the outside and on the inside at the same time with only one operator. So when you're welding a flange, you'll be able to do half a uh, circumferential, and then you can start on the inside. When you have filled the seam up, you can stop on the outside and then do the last half revolution on the inside. That means you get almost half the time of weld as with a, a standard column and boom. The benefit here is that you can actually have one operator, two seams at the same time, and we also had two machines working together with one operator four welding heads. For more information please contact us on email or phone or look at our website. Thank you. Thank you Blaholm and thank you Jesper for their contribution to the webinar. In an industry where delays uh, in the construction of the wind farm, lengthy maintenance periods or failures in the equipment have an high economical impact, uh, the supplied products must comply with uh, the strictest technological requirements, always guaranteeing the delivery time. Manufacturers of tower flanges are uh, required to deliver products following strict tolerances. The increase in size and diameters of the towers uh, brings uh, new challenges uh, to the fabricators of the flanges. Let me introduce our customer, Industrial Barranquesa, a Spanish company leader in the production of flanges for wind towers. Pioneers in Spain in the production of hot former flanges and later welding without material addition. Industrial Barranquesa has been using for more than 10 years our Yoto 2500 flange bending machine for its continuous production of flanges for the wind energy industry. Hello, my name is Pablo de la Fuente, mechanical engineer and sales director in Barranquesa since May 2020. I look forward to talking with you about our solutions in this webinar and in the near future. Industrial Barranquesa is a family-owned Spanish company founded in 1960. Our headquarters is located in Navarra, one of the strategic points for the wind industry. We have been manufacturing solutions, flanges and anchor cages for the wind energy industry since 1990 in two production sites. Barranquesa has two business units. One is dedicated to the manufacturing of tower flanges and the other supplies complete anchor cages or foundation baskets to this industry. We work for the main players in this industry such as Siemens Gamesa, Nordes, Vextas, Enercon, GE, etc. In addition, and in order to add value to our solutions, 
we have several service centers in Northern Europe and North America. In our opinion, the wind industry is in a good position and it has a bright future. Nevertheless, Barranquesa and many of the European suppliers face the threat of the ASEAN competitors. Because of this, we cannot relax and we have to be able to add value to our solutions and to our services. We cannot compete on price alone. One of these challenges we find ourselves with is the increase of the tower's sides and consequently of the flanges diameter. This is not only an issue for us, but there is a problem for the transportation also. These large diameters created issues related to transportation of such large component. For that reason, we are prepared to offer the industry flanges manufactured in segments. 45, 90 or 120 degrees are the most common formats. We are also increasing our engineering researches in order to design and even more importantly to optimize the solutions, saving cost without sacrificing performance. We are proud to collaborate with all the OEMs and EPC companies that fully trust in our products and services. Please contact me to discuss how Barranquesa can resolve some specific problems you may have. Thank you for your attention and goodbye. Gracias Pablo for all the useful information. Actually, Facin is able to supply with solutions to a large part of the steel fabricators in the wind industry supply chain. Five years ago, Modesta, our good customer based in Latvia, came to us with a request of a solution for a dedicated machine for bending door frames for wind towers. Uh, wind, wind tower door frames, uh, in this case, are oval rings uh, made for reinforcing the entry hall necessary for a technician to enter and access the tower. The door frame are generally made of steel plates 400-500 mm wide with thicknesses that range from 50 up to even 100 mm thick to comply with the design norms. Being oval uh, with rather small ready, they require for their fabrication a machine capable of bending these thicknesses down to a ready of uh, around 250-400 mm. Faced with this challenge, our technical department designed a special four-roll linear machine, half meter long, with uh, extra bending force and extra torque in order to increase the automation and precision for this kind of dedicated production. In fact, the 4HEL model DF can roll these complex shapes automatically through CNC with uh, minimum cycle time and uh, shortest pre-bending possible to minimize the material waste. Well, uh, another type of uh, wind tower door frame consists in a sector of the tower that is just uh, thicker in correspondence of the hole. Well, also in this case, we have delivered uh, standard plate rolls with, with uh, high bending force and uh, short roll distance in order to minimize the flat part on such a, a short plate and avoid uh, the need of extra material. So this is how we, we supply the industry with the innovative solution for the complete supply chain of the wind industry. So after hearing all the speakers, I believe that we can extract some uh, conclusions. Of course, speaking of green energy, we cannot forget the key point of energy efficiency, as energy consumption is closely linked to the production capacity and production costs. Manufacturers 
must choose the optimal balance between maximizing productivity and minimizing consumption. In this regard, Pacin is investing in R&D to build machines with optimized hydraulic units that are energy saving. The reason is each kilowatt save in the machine used 24-7 is translated in thousands of euros save in energy consumption every year. That's right, Diego. And also in this webinar, we have tried to stress through the intervention of several key players uh, the importance of the supply chain in the development and success of the wind energy industry. There is great hope in this uh, renewal source of energy. And so, as we have seen, uh, the industry will have to respond with audacious but also efficient innovations to these challenges. So now it is time for the Q&A. We thank you all for the questions you have sent during the registration and the comments and questions during the webinar. We will respond a couple of questions now and the rest will be answered uh, right away after the webinar. So let us see the first question. Okay, first question. What are all the key points regarding uh, the rolling of windmill components? Question coming from India. Thank you, Mr. Deepak, for your question. Well, as you have seen uh, in the webinar, there are many processes involved uh, in the rolling of a uh, wind tower can. From cutting, rolling, welding, painting, delivery. As we say, a reliable workshop is designed to produce at least uh, 200 complete structural tower per year. And this is possible by using rolling machine intensively on two or three shifts every working day. Obviously, it depends on dimension, but in the case of latest generation towers, we can indicate an output of uh, approximately two can per hour, including tack welding. This is possible by using one only single operator and automatic bending cycle. Okay, let's have a look at the second question. Is there any alternative to the manual measurement of the bending radius of wind tower section? Question from France, from Monsieur Nicolas. Thank you, Nicolas. Okay, uh, well, I can say that uh, FACIN, R&D, has developed non-contact measuring system also integrated uh, with the CNC that can even suggest autocorrection uh, of the bending steps. These systems are really useful to cut uh, operation time, to give a uh, big help to the operators and also for safety reasons, so that they do not need to, to go inside uh, the cans for measuring. And uh, Facina R&D is still improving this system testing new technologies with higher resolution and uh, suitable for the factory environment. Okay, let's start with the first question. Where can Australian manufacturing facilities get involved in international and local supply chain? Question from Australia, obviously. Thank you, Wade. Well, uh, during this webinar, we tapped uh, an important but uh, limited part of the supply chain. Let's say that uh, we have to remember that uh, wind towers are composed of uh, more than 8,000 parts, and some of them very critical. Or even think about logistics. The transport of uh, these enormous pieces, for example. We have supplied our rolling system to companies in Australia. So we believe there are many opportunities for Australian companies to get involved in this growing, exciting industry. Okay, let's see the second question. 
is a three rows machine a good alternative to the four rows? Question from the United States. Thank you very much, Steve. Well, let's say that uh, the ideal machine for the production of structural towers is four rows. Uh, because of speed, ease of use, and level of automation. No doubt. However, uh, the investment in three rows machine can be interesting uh, if the thicknesses goes above uh, 70 80 millimeters and in particular for conical sections and uh, this means that uh, the HAV technology is very popular for monopies and jackets uh, jackets that has got also a more complicated structure with uh, braces and piles and small diameters so uh, for this kind of applications uh, we can say that the versatility of uh, the three rows HAV can compensate uh, the slightly lower output rate. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Diego. And thank you all of you for participating to this webinar. Uh, we have arrived to the end of uh, this event. We hope uh, sincerely that you have found it useful and that we have been able to provide all of our viewers with uh, valuable content. Uh, should you need more information, please do not hesitate to contact us or any of the speakers that have participated to this webinar. Ours and their contact details will be shown right after uh, this goodbye. Uh, all the best and keep safe and stay healthy. Thank you very, very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Ciao. Thank you all. Ciao, ciao.